If you're looking for cheap tickets to go to the basketball game, I got you covered. It's just JP Partner, the Seat Geek, to give you the best ticket purchasing experience. Download the Seat Geek app and you'll unlock so many opportunities to go to an event you will certainly enjoy. Like a basketball game. What's awesome about Seat Geek is that it gives you the best price from a lot of sellers and it separates the good from the bad and also shows you the viewpoint of your seat on your next outing. Yes, use that for hold on. There's more. Use the promo code issues JP to get $20 off your purchase. Your deal just got even more awesome. So, what are you waiting for? Download the SeatGeek app for your next event experience. Is this the title? What up, JP Nation? It's your boy JP. If you're a day one returning subscriber, welcome back to my channel. If you're a new subscriber, welcome to It's Just JP, where we do basketball reactions and basketball content. If you love the game of basketball and reactions and content, please subscribe down below for more content for you and click the notification bell. You know where our next upload is. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Today, we are reacting to why you never poke Larry Bird, a trash talk story told by NBA legends. Larry Bird, one of the greatest trash talkers of all time, one of the greatest players of all time. We did a reaction video the other day talking about him dropping 60 points on the Atlanta Hawks in 1985. So let's go ahead and get into this video because I love Larry Bird stories and I love a breakdown of different stories, different versions by different NBA legends. So let's go ahead and get into it and shout out Larry Bird, the new consultant of the Indiana Pacers. And you got to wet Larry Bird all day. Celtics, man. Celtics. Let's go ahead and get into it. You guys absolutely love the Larry Bird trash talk stories. And this one is one of the greatest and funniest trash talking moments of all time. Now, a few months ago, I posted a Larry Shout Bird video that well. did quite well on this channel. And it featured Dominique and the Atlanta Hawks. But yeah, this is what I did. separate to that. And this trash talking moment happened a few years later. Mm. This is the time that Larry Bird went in on Spud Webb. Dominique Wilkins, Doc Rivers, and the whole Atlanta Hawks team. And <laughs> it is hilarious. Larry Bird is one of the greatest players of all time, yep. but he's arguably the greatest trash talker yes. of all time as well. Yes. And this video proves that. So if you do Kill enjoy videos Michael just like Wesley this one, Miller, I really Gary appreciate Payton. you guys could hit that like button. If Shout out to Nick Smith, man. He'd be video. dropping dope Subscribe content. Subscribe if you're new for videos just like dope this content. one. I also want to give full credit to all the podcast interviews and clips used in this video. They are on the screen right now, so be sure to check them out in their entireties. I don't want to keep you guys waiting, so this is the reason why you don't trash talk Larry Bird, and I hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> it strikes again. You guys played the Celtics big three in the playoffs, 88. What were those matchups like? They were brutal. We were trying to go at each other's throat. It was unbelievable. I mean, game seven. They had a great rivalry, too. Game seven of the 1988 Eastern Conference. Oh. Seven. For Dominic Wilkins and the Hawks. And Larry Bird this is the Celtics. The door battle right here. It was a time to test their championship resolve. For three quarters, the teams fought to a standstill. Yes. I remember this. But it was only a prelude to what was to come. I love the final quarter. I love the build up. A ghouling personal contest of can you top this was about to begin. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this is when Dominique and Lerbo went at each other. Dominique was a very good scorer. Very good scorer. Who brought out the best in each other? And I remember seeing Dominique Wilkins. And I said, man, I would love to play with him. I didn't know anything about the Hawks, <laughs> but it was like, I would love to play with him. And then, Took some up station on the road, but Atlanta, Atlanta. now I meet my teammate. And I was like, I mean, a, a dream come true. You think about those Atlanta teams with Dominique mm -hmm. and Spud and Doc Rivers and Tree Rollins. And so, we you know, had a they lot first sure had a great had team. Respect of us. Kevin Wilson was a good player. Boston was just and, so much uh, better. And, and Dominique, Philly, and Doc and Rivers, and Spud I, Webb, and came Troy on their bench. They got a nice team. Kevin Rollins, 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 Kevin Rollins,
they had a long where we were young, team. We were really athletic. We had that 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 energy that a team would need. And all we had to do was build chemistry, mm. begin to understand each other's games, weaknesses, and strengths. And we did that, and we started to flourish after the first four or five years. They were a deep team that could score the ball, and we were at our best. We were in trouble. But with that team, they were so fun to watch because Dominic was the headliner. But mm -hmm. everyone else around them, when we talked about Spud Webb, they would come over and play with us across from Georgia Tech. You see, this little joker can flat mm -hmm. out go. First small guy get the dunk contest, win the dunk contest. The all that hype around them. The question would be, when it got crunch time, the other team would outsmart them. That was, that was, mm -hmm. that was a pretty good bunch to not yes. to not win it all. And and they had that one. Remember the the Dominique Larry Bird big yeah, shooting. Yeah. It's, it's game seven. In 1988, against the Atlanta Hawks, Dominique and Larry Bird, one of the most clutch moments. I remember watching it as a kid. It got me hype. I went outside and started shooting outside <laughs> the playground. <laughs> <laughs> I was both of y'all. 1988, that had to be one of the best moments. Conference semifinals, Nick and Bird. Game seven, the Dominique mm. Bird series. Shot for uh, shot. Shot for shot. Dominique and Bird going back and forth. You know, we we, we should have eliminated, eliminated them in six. Well, the whole series was crazy. Uh, game one and two, the Celtics won by like a combined 80 points. Like, they blew us out. As the Hawks found themselves down to the final gap. Put back over the offense. They were flying high. The offensive spark plug, little Spud, Woo! found a way to slither through the Celtic defense, putting together a career best playoff performance and igniting the Hawks to a much needed victory. I remember coming back from game three to Atlanta and the big article. Uh, in Atlanta uh, Journal was put a fork in him, we're done. You know, and then we mm -hmm. win game three and then win game four, go into Boston uh, and win game five. And that was a great game. I thought, I think we took control. This is a great series. Great series. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's kind of a clash of two worlds. In Bird, you've got somebody who's already an icon. He's already been uh, sanctified as a Boston Saint. Mm -hmm. And Dominique represents a different kind of basketball. Yep. We had him mad the one time. We were 3-2. We won game five uh, in Boston. We was not supposed to win that game, you know, the critics say. So we knew going to game six, I said, man, we can, we can advance and we can beat these guys. The frenetic Hawks, led by the Freakazoid, had old school Boston by the throat. Mm. Up three games to two in the best of seven series. That pressure. All Atlanta has to do is go down to Atlanta and close the series out. And then the last play in game six um, was, you know, Dominique and I were the two guys that score. And at the end of the game, we drew up a play. Uh, I called a timeout because they knew what we were running. Uh, we called another one. It turned into a broken play. Mm. I allowed the ball to Cliff Livingston, and he was supposed to dribble handoff to either me or Dominique. DJ read it, uh, and he top-sided me. Uh, Cliff looked at Dominique, and then Cliff went on his own. I went to bats with left hand, uh, running hook. I was mad. Coach right-handed. He shot a left-handed hook shot. I'm like, Woody, don't break the play, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and so we ended up losing that game Man. after the game. And I remember this old lady at the airport. I mean, and I'm not exaggerating. She may have been 80. Uh, you know, had her little purse, and she walks up to me. Hey, Rivers, you thought you wasn't coming back, did you? <laughs> I, I, I will never forget that. I wish I knew who that lady was. Uh, Barry made the prediction. He said, Atlanta blew the opportunity. I'm guaranteeing it. Boston. Woo! Well, they had their chance. You know, they had a big chance uh, to beat us. I think now that we're going to come out and, and play like we did tonight, but we're going to be at home and um, our shots are going to be dropping a little bit better and we're going to be running a little bit faster. So I'd say Sunday's going to be a big win for the Celtics. Woo! Larry, okay. Look at that, right? I guarantee a win. Atlanta blew the opportunity. And I'm like, hey, hey I don't know what bird. Game seven? Play. I, we have a great opportunity. We going in there. We going to kick their butt. We coming to win. It, it, I don't care what he said. We get to Boston. And we walk out of the locker room. And I stop. I said, we going to win this bleep bleep game. I said, if you ain't ready to fight, you ain't ready to go to war. If you guys ain't ready to fight, you ain't ready to go to war, don't even come to court. Don't come out here. So whoever guarding me tonight going to have a long night. Unfortunately, Bird was saying the same thing in the other locker room. <laughs> in the locker room to, to his teammates. So, it, it, um, and set up for one of the greatest shootouts ever in the 
seventh game. And I remember Larry Bird, he uh he passed by a locker room, he like, There's nobody in here to guard me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he was just playing though, yeah, yeah, because he was free. I remember before this big game against Dominique that Larry was out shooting and I was out shooting early at one end of the court. Larry was down at the other end and I noticed that Larry was down there like shooting left handed jump mm. hooks from like 12, 15 feet. Now he made left handed shots, but I saw him shooting right handed jump hooks from 12 or 15 feet. And I went down there and go like, what are you doing? He goes, my Achilles tendons are killing me. My step back isn't, it won't work tonight. I need that jump hook. And he made something that game. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Woo! It tells you his confidence. It tells you what, what kind of a player he IQ was. Just too. To IQ. Have a game plan of what shots yep. he was going to make that night. So, it, it, um, it's Buzz one of the greatest shootouts ever in the seventh game. Despite Bird's brash, the Hawks seemed unintimidated. And it would quickly become apparent that if Larry was to make good on his prediction, he would have to contend with a high flying Dominique Wilkins, who would simply the game of his life. We came into game seven with the right mindset, believing that we would have a chance to win game seven. You know, it was one of those Sundays in the Boston Garden, uh, hot, uh, <laughs> you know, crowd crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, they expected they were going to win. Uh, I don't think they expected to have a, a tussle like they had in that game. Game 7 would go down as one of the greatest games in NBA history. Dominic was an unstoppable player. No guy could guard him in the league, one man for man. You could see his competitiveness. You could see his determination in that game 7. He was trying to win that. He was trying to win it. There was only one player on the floor who could match his will. Jump hook. That's like a difficult shot to and do. I remember, That's practice. He only had 12 points going to fourth quarter. I remember coming down the floor. And I remember myself, Larry Bird, and Kevin Willis. I really believe this. The reason why Larry Bird got so hot in that game in that fourth quarter, Kevin Willis and I and Bird was running down the court. We were running down the court, and Kevin reached across me, put his hands, and mm. put his finger in Larry Bird's chest. Mm. So I said, don't let this so-and-so score any one night. Kevin Willis came mm. up and said, me, don't let him score tonight. And Bird standing up the next time I'm looking at Kevin. <laughs> Uh, what, are what are you doing? doing? Let him sleep. Doing? Let him sleep. Her eyes got like this big. You don't want to wake him sleep. You woke him up. <laughs> you got 12 points. Oh, Good no, job, Kevin Don't wake Willis. him up. <laughs> <laughs> Low IQ right there. Leave him sleep. Let him sleep. Him sleep. Him sleep. Yes. What you doing? Woke him up. You don't wake up with sleeping giant. <laughs> his eyes got that big. You know, it's like his eyes got this big. I look at him, what are you doing? <laughs> That point, it Set was up the match. match. That fourth quarter yep. was unbelievable. Shot for shot. Larry was torturing him. Dominique was torturing me on when he had the ball. <laughs> Left hand. Ooh. Damn playing going good. Maybe the best fourth quarter as far as Mono Mono of all time. Mm. That touch. I gotta come down there. Offensively, I gotta carry the load and I gotta keep us going. And I remember well, as an NBA fan down, watching that game. Board, and I'm watching the game. And I remember they took me out for a blow and Kevin and uh, Cliff Livingston came in the game. And he got hot. <laughs> remember, Coach said, All right, Nick, go in there and slow him down. I said, Slow him down. <laughs> hot now. Forget that. Why would you take Dominique out? Try to match him bucket for bucket. That's what turned out one of the greatest 
fourth quarter's out. So we're playing, and the ball goes up. You know how you, 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 you clear space, you get that rebound every day. You're not even worried about it. So I push it, I, I go up to get it, and all of a sudden, man, there's just a force all over my shoulder. He dunks it, he dunks it. You know those short shorts? Well, they were right here. I mean, he threw that thing down, and I was like, oh, my, and Larry has the classic line. Larry goes, shoot, I better, better box that guy out, aren't you? I said, yeah. I suggest, I suggest you put a body on him. That was one of the craziest things ever. I'd never seen a guy that high in my Make life. Oh, oh, threw it down. Short shorts right here, huh, kid? Right here, baby. That was not, I still have nightmares about that spinny. <laughs> Obviously. You had 47 in that game. Larry Bird had 34, but 20 of those in that quarter. But like I said, I think he ended up with 34. And the goal continues. I don't think it was the, uh, uh, so much an edge they had. I just thought it was a player that they had. And that was Larry Bird. <laughs> Basically, put the team on his shoulders. Yeah. In that fourth quarter. He's like, I'm not going to let y'all lose. Mm. And he was working on that early in the game. Wow. Dominique was pretty much the whole game. Larry, uh, the fourth quarter, uh, kind of then, uh, uh, you know, carried their team. That's what made him so great. Oh, oh, boxing match, blow for blow. Hmm. Only oh, two people on him. Oh my god. Man, you gotta be tight on him on defense. Mm. <laughs> Cause I ain't going on vacation. Man, all the people lose. Oh my god. You know, get the ball, Larry, and let him make the read. Because if they come double, he's going to make the right play. Um, and the game wasn't that complicated for him, and he made some tough shots. Look at like that, like, how did you do that? You know, and again, he wasn't he wasn't feeling great at that time of the year, at that moment. Left and, hand. Um, That's crazy. To watch him just gut it out and just to will his body to even finish that game, let alone score 20 in the fourth quarter of a game seven, is, is mind-boggling. Larry Bird, Larry Bird that night. Was, Toughness. Listen. Uh, he, he was unbelievable, and he was so clutch. He was just as clutch that night. It's just the Larry in the fourth quarter was unstoppable. So clutch is not just the final yeah. three or four seconds of the game. Yes. And the thing is, we were sending everybody at him to slow him down. He was so hot that I think one of the shots he hit was the left-handed three. That's when you know a guy is in his own. Yeah, like, look at that. Like, wow. Robert Parrish always says 40,000 eyes on Larry Bird because they knew he was going to get the ball. And uh, we knew it, our opponents knew it, and now it's just up to them to stop it. Get the ball to Larry in the clutch time. Boston Celtics will win this series. Man, he was doing a little bit of everything. I don't know really what he was doing in that fourth quarter, but the stuff that he was doing, it was unbelievable, man. I mean, he was throwing left hand shots, running hooks. Uh, his game was at another level. We was trying to match each other's will. 
20 of his 34 in the fourth quarter. Dominique had... <laughs> yeah, Larry Bird hit more clutch shots, you know, in pressure situations than, than any player. They told you about each and every one, right? You talked about Larry Bird saying someone's got to lose this game. When did he say that to you? Early in the fourth or late in the fourth? No, it was late in the fourth quarter. Um, <laughs> it was... It was probably like, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds to go in the game. I think it was a timeout or we were taking the ball out of the bounds. I can't remember what it was, but I remember him saying that. And that was, he said, you know, we both deserve to win, but somebody got to go home. And, man, to his credit, man, he took the Celtics and put them on his back. And he would call the spot. Yeah. You know, <laughs> well, he never called the spot against me. <laughs> 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 you know, I just got a respect. <laughs> I tell people that bird talk trash yes and let you know, let you know every time <laughs> but it, it ain't the trash it wasn't the trash for it was the you know it's like i'm gonna shoot left hand at this time right right why you well, well, right, well, you well, you right, yeah. oh, yeah. pretty much that was it i mean that was one of the greatest performance i've seen from a guy in those circumstances dude you talk about seven game in the playoffs to carry his team the way he did in that fourth quarter when you talk about the clutch shots he hit 10 clutch shots i was gonna say that it was crazy too because it's rare in the game you feel it like you know you guys have been in games where after the game people say man that was the most amazing game but you were in it and you're like you know like, I, I didn't feel that i knew it was a good game right that was one of the few games i was doing this, this was, was a hell of a game right there. now <laughs> it was a hell of a game you know? absolutely yeah he's like poetry in motion i mean he knew how to play the game before you even got got to him. And it was a shootout in the fourth quarter. It came down to the last shot. One left to ponder what might have been. The other to lead his team on. And let me know what you thought about this video down below in the comment section. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you didn't. Wow, uh, one of the greatest shooters of all time, Dominique versus Larry Bird, 1998 in the uh, semifinals, Boston, Atlanta. Um, Atlanta's team was really good, man, but like the thing that couldn't get them over the hump is you either had Boston, you had Philly, you had Milwaukee Bucks, uh, the Detroit Pistons. I mean, it's just, you know, a lot of good teams in the East, and unfortunately, you just, you know, can't get over the hump. They had a really good team. Dominique, Kevin Willis, Doc Rivers, uh, Cliff Leviston, Antron Carr, John Battle, um, Spud Webb. I mean, the list goes on and on. You know, that was a really great team. And, you know, getting the offensive rebounds and then the hype and the dunks and stuff. Dominique was a, you know, everybody be looking at Dominique with the dunks, you know, because he's one of the best dunkers of all time. But he was a great scorer, too, as well. Great scorer with the basketball. But fortunately, Ke uh, Kevin Willis had to learn his lesson why you should never poke a guy like Larry Bird because when you poke the bell, he wakes up and this is what happens right there. If you just let him sleep, who knows what would have happened if you just let him sleep and just focus on what you're doing, but you had to poke the bell. Just like Grant Williams did, Grant Williams had to poke the bell at Jimmy Butler and Miami went on a 24-9 one and, we, and Boston lost that game. But uh, yeah, that was great though. And then, you know, for the people that watched this live game back in the day, man, like salute to y'all because that was an incredible game. I would have definitely been on my seats if I was born back in the day watching that game because, oh my God, just a shootout and just the blow for blow. It just felt like a boxing match, like Ali Frazier, you know. It just, it just felt like that. It just had that vibe. So definitely um, great trash talk story, great breakdown. Love Nick Smith stuff. So if you have more Larry Bird stories, please let me know in the comments below. If you want me to react to something, please let me know in the comments. Subscribe to this is JP for more basketball content. Click the notification bell. You know where our next upload is. I'm JP, and we out of here. Peace.